G'day guys, so ICOM have unveiled the ICOM IC7300 successor. This is the 7300 Mark II at the Tokyo Ham Fair that just happens to be this weekend. Now before we go into the features of the Mark II, I just wanted to clear up a couple of things. Now most of you will probably just skip over this part of the video. Please don't because it's rather important that I get this information out because I get continually asked about this all the time and comments I see online all the time about this. We don't get access to this information about the pre-release information about the radio before it's actually announced, which I think is rather disappointing because we're very excited to be able to share this news with you and we like to make sure that it is accurate as possible and we like to you know, be part of the hype and the excitement. I love seeing a new radio and I'm sure that you guys love seeing a new radio as well. So the 7300 is um, obviously the Mark II's building on the original 7300 design and feature set. Uh, the Mark II is an interesting choice to put on there, similar to what they did with the IC706 Mark II um, as well. I noticed that ICOM haven't really put a high-resolution image. That is a very low-resolution image on their website, which is um, interesting. So uh, it's going to have HF 50 megs and also 70 megs on the European version as well, um, and that was uh, planning initial shipments to be uh, by the end of 2025. So building on the 7300, we know that this has been a really popular radio, sold over 100,000 units. So there are some enhanced performances, a better receiver, um, some DC designs in the power uh, design department to reduce um, how hot it gets, also receive standby consumption, and a few other bits and pieces here which we'll go into. Now, on uh, ICOM's website, I'll put a link in the description below. The pre-release, which was released after it was announced at the Tokyo Ham Fair, um, is here, and this is the brochure that has... Um, a lot of this information so already you could see an external display so that gives you some sort of indication of what's coming on this radio um, here on the front the design is very much the similar or the same as the uh, original 7300 i don't see any buttons um, i've obviously spoken about the 7300 for years on this channel and how good that radio is um, so i know quite a bit about it i've owned one for quite a number of years and this design looks pretty much similar and I don't mind that. I, I don't mind that they have stuck with the original um, looking design. They haven't changed too much. They've kept the same menu structures it seems and they haven't um, deviated away from what's actually working. The 706, um, they did the same thing with the different generations and they just improved on that and that's good. I think that's what they're, they're doing here. It now has an HDMI port for an external display. So this is a new feature. Everyone out there, jump in the comments. What do you think of HDMI? I've been hearing it for years um, that uh, they should be going to HDMI. They have. Uh, it's got a built-in CW decoder. We can see that on the screen there, um, decoding um, CW directly on the screen, so you don't need an external PC for that. Um, the receiver um, has, uh, has had a little bit of work done on it and also the TX phase noise uh, characteristics compared to the um, previous 7300 or the original 7300, you can see the, the differences there. Um, HDMI port, so let's have a look here. As a first for ICOM's radios, it's going to incorporate an HDMI port for external display connection. Operating information such as frequency, scope, waterfall menus can be shown on a large monitor and audio can be output through the HDMI to the display speakers. Awesome, cool, that's great. And you can see that that is detailed here on the back of the radio, um, that port there. Receive in and out connectors. So we've got two SMA connectors here. Um, this is so that you can put uh, bandpass filters in line, preamps in line, um, to similar to the, what the IC7610 has on the back. That has a couple of BNCs. It's an interesting choice that they chose two SMAs. Um, just looking here and the size of all those connectors, they probably could have put a couple of BNCs, but they've gone with two SMAs. You've got your standard antenna connector here on the back but then you've also got a receive only uh, connector, which is great. So we can use that for um, having two antennas, a low noise antenna potentially, and also our main transmitting antenna too, which is a standard feature in like the 7610 and other radios as well in the ICOM line. Simplified RSBA1 remote control. So now you do not need a base station computer. The previous 7300 had a little USB 
connection on the back. You'd have to connect that into your PC, run the service software, have the PC running all the time, and it was a real pain to get operational for remote operation. With the Mark II, you don't need that. It has the LAN port built in, the server built into the radio, similar to the IC9700, similar to the 7610, similar to the 705, which does it over Wi-Fi. Uh, but the 7300 has the Ethernet port built in, so that's good. So it's going to really simplify being simplify being able to remotely control this radio and being able to um, use it on other pieces of software, maybe even SDR control and other um, uh, third-party softwares as well, potentially. Um, USB Type-C, so this has dual COM ports and audio, so it's going to provide a dual virtual COM port. So at the moment, with the original 7300, you only get one, um, and if you try to use both of them, if you try to use them with two different applications, it'll lock the radio up. So if you're trying to use WSJTX and you try to use, um, say, a logging piece of software, so- logging program, and it tries to access the COM port at the same time, then it's going to fail on one of the programs. You can use two simultaneous applications, such as FT8 logging and contest software, with just the one USB cable. And finally, I'm glad to see some up to date standard connectors here on the back of the radio. We've got the HDMI and the USB-C. So that's going to be really um, easy and uh, a lot more friendly than using the USB-B cable. So there isn't really that much more else here on the back of the radio that's really changed too much. Everything else seems to be pretty much very similar. We've still got our um, keying jacks and our ALC send jacks. We've got the um, remote... um, uh, we've got a remote control jack and an external speaker jack also the accessory 13 pin socket on the back so you can interface it to various different things as well uh, the low heat consumption and power consumption here they show this um, diagram or this description here of what it's like it's going to run the radio is going to run cooler um, my 7300 when i've run that on ft8 it does get reasonably warm it doesn't get overly too hot though um, but it's not a really hot climate here so maybe in those warmer climates it's going to be a little bit um, less hot uh, thermally the other thing too is that uh, they've reduced the power consumption from 0.9 of an amp to 0.7 of an amp so they've saved 200 milliamps there during receive standby operation let me know in the comments below what you think of the Mark II. Are you going to pick one up? Is it going to be a worthwhile investment over the original 7300? Again, this is all sort of the information that has been uh, given. No idea on price or any other feature sets or anything, no videos or product releases or anything like that. All I've been relying on is pretty much what's just come out today. Uh, what's also been on Twitter, there's been a couple of people that have been at the Tokyo Ham Fair taking photos of the unit um but that's pretty much it um so i guess you know when you don't have the information provided to you you can only really speculate so go ahead do that in the comments below let me know what you think and uh yeah very interesting at least it's good to see um the refresh working on what had improving on what has been working so not doing anything completely fresh and starting again because we know that this works and it is a great entry-level radio. I still think the original 7300 is probably the best beginner's HF entry-level radio. This just builds on it and I think this is going to be personally very popular, um, especially with the extra features that have been included.